Happy quad witching. Quad witching is a day when multiple derivatives contracts expire and was the cause of negative $37 a barrel oil last year. People are forced to disperse of their contracts because they can't hold them. Overall, it just makes for a very volatile day. People are deciding what to do with their positions. They're taking big hits or gains on the day, whatever side of the trade and what trade, etc., that they're on. So today's volatility was no surprise. And uh, I'm actually seeing some quite optimistic signs in the rough. And I'm not shaken by that sell into the close because that last hour of trade is typically the height of the volatility, even though it did seem to come this morning, because that's the end of people's period to either buy or sell that contract. Negative $37 oil day, you saw in the last hour, it just really went down like crazy. So last hour of the oil trade, which doesn't happen in the last hour of the stock trade. I believe it closes at two o'clock Eastern time. Um, but yeah, volatile day. But there were signs of optimism. For example, ARC opening the day in the red and then pulling into the green. That is quite important. ARC has been the epicenter of this most recent route. It's the epicenter of the Fed hatred. So if today was a continuation of the Fed fear, we would not have seen that move in ARC. We actually would have seen ARC be the leader of the gains, but that was not the case. Or the leader of the, of the downside, but that was not the case. The downside was energy and financials. Energy and financials. Two sectors that will benefit from Fed tightening, actually. So let's not get too ahead of ourselves on Fed tightening. I don't think the Fed is going to drive the market down. If they were, you know, hiking, if, if the 10 year was going to go from 1% to 5% in, or 1% to 8% really, it needs to get to, because it needs to be positive in real terms. And if the, one, if the 10 year goes from 1.4% to 2%, it's not going to matter because it's still a negative rate. It still doesn't make sense to buy bonds. It's not gonna make sense until rates get way up there, which they're not really gonna do for some time. Like we're just kinda in a Goldilocks zone still, even with a little bit of treasury buying, and T-bill buying, etc., coming off the table. It's like, doesn't matter even, it just doesn't matter. Um, so let's take a pause. And let's focus on the facts. We're seeing energy down. We're seeing the price of oil down. We're seeing energy stocks down for the last about eight weeks or so. Why? I don't know why. It's Omicron fears is the reason, but they're not backed by fundamentals. Last week was the highest week on record of petroleum demand. So why are people freaking about Omicron when we're having record demand, right? Doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It's just panic in the stocks. And if you look at the price of oil and you consider it in the past six months, a year, you'll remember we had a very painful period, both in energy stocks and oil, when we had that Delta wave in July and it co coincided with the decline in oil, which then saw a recovery to new 52 week and multi-year highs and the price per barrel of oil and in many of the energy stocks. I think we're in for something similar and I think we've already seen the decline. We had the 13% uh, day after Thanksgiving day route when we first heard about Om Omicron and we're not back to those levels. And we're basically projecting massive waves. If we were concerned, we'd be at or below those levels, but that's not the case. We're actually having a mini consolidation here right above 70. And I think that sends us upwards where it should, and we can continue just the, the simple positive trend. So energy stocks, I think are a good place to be fundamentally based on the supply, demand, and price action dynamics of oil, the industry, and the fact that these companies have been in a multi-year um, depressed state based on fear around the long-term thesis, which many, including Exxon and Schlumberger and Chevron, have addressed. They are now long-term participants in the economy after the days of oil and um, they are trading at below pre-pandemic levels even though the price of oil is at multi-year highs. So 
they're just really cheap stocks and we expect the price of oil to continue to go up and like Exxon says, for them to uh, double their earnings potential in the next several years by 2027. So we like these stocks long-term, we're ready to ride it for that doubling of earnings. Uh, we also like our 10X tech, which seems to have bottomed, seems to have bottomed. I don't like calling bottoms, but it seemed like we got one here. It seems like today was the climax, the climax for the market. Today was the climax for the market. And uh, you know, the epicenter, if it's climaxing, get ready for the epicenter, a little bit of rip in good names. I'm not saying Peloton's gonna rip. I haven't liked Peloton. I've actually shat on Peloton, Peloton, DocuSign, and Zoom. In addition to Mega Cap Tech, even though I haven't shat on Mega Cap Tech, I've only said the stocks are quite expensive. Given that you're not getting 10x growth, you're getting like 1.2x growth. So we like uh, 10x growth. We're happy to hold it. Um, we did sell a lot of it in January. It was way uh, last year. We were all in that. Upwork, Jumia, all the CRISPR stocks. Now we have two of the three big CRISPR stocks. We don't have Upwork anymore. We have some Jumia, but we're, we've been adding to these names after some. Now the prices are good. At the end of the day, we're focused on price. Energy's priced well. Mining companies are priced well. 10x growth is finally priced well again. We have had some names in that bucket because they are priced well in the long-term thesis. But over the last several weeks, we've been adding to those names, we've been adding to energy, and now we are all in, and we are hoping for some sort of rally into the close, or in the close of the year and beyond into next year. Um, it seems like we got a whole lot to recover in some names that really shouldn't be down that are making fundamental improvements and benefiting from the macro environment. Energy, and mining companies, you can throw banks into there, but we don't like, we're just not bank purchasers. Uh, we think that's an in interesting space that's being disrupted, so we don't want to uh, put too many eggs and you know, too much of a basket in there. And then 10X growth that we really like, like CRISPR, Smile, Direct Club. If you look, my teeth aren't 100% straight. I don't want braces though, but Smile Direct, please sponsor, please sponsor a very happy shareholder. So that's today's video. Hope it provided you some value and some clarity. If it did, feel free to like and subscribe. I appreciate you watching. Feel free to comment and uh, ask questions. I'm here to help. So that's today's video. Until next time, peace out.